Hello and welcome to NIFA's Webinar Wednesdays. My name is John Turner, Manager of Community Development and Research at NIFA. Also joining me today from behind the scenes is Susan Fullis, Outreach and Community Development Administrator. I would like to uh, start by thanking Wells Fargo, who is our sponsor for today's webinar. Our topic is Youth Build, Encouraging and Educating the Next Generation of Construction Trade Specialists Through Schools and Community Colleges. Before we get started, I would like to remind everyone that we're going to save the Q&A until the end of the webinar. If you have questions, please use the question or chat feature, and we will ask the panelists at the end of the presentations. Our moderator today is Thomas Judds. Thomas is the Planning and Development Manager at the Lincoln Housing Authority. Thomas also serves on the Governor's Commission on Housing and Homelessness and is the Board President for Nebraska Housing Resources. Prior experience includes nearly 20 years in affordable housing with a nonprofit syndicator of low income housing tax credits and financial manager of a property management development company. Thomas worked in the banking industry for 12 years. He also established Little Salt Development Company and co developed 12 uh, rental townhomes in Ashland, financed with low income housing tax credits. Thomas received an associate's degree in business management from Metropolitan Community College in Omaha, Nebraska. So without further ado, I will hand it over to you, Thomas. Thank you, John, I appreciate that. It's kind of nice to be reminded a little bit of what your life looks like looking back, so thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm, and I also wanna say I appreciate the opportunity to serve as moderator for this session. And it's a very meaningful and important session really about youth build. So it's one that we're kind of invested here at the Lincoln Housing Authority. So I'm really, I'm glad to be a part of this and thank you for asking me. And I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention um, and acknowledge Susan for her faithful service behind the scenes in producing this show. So thank you, Susan. And then today I have the distinct pleasure of in, uh, introducing three panelists and I will probably introduce, do the introductions for each right prior to their um, presentations, that way they can convert over to their slide presentations and then it'll be a little fill. So without any further ado, I would like to start with Bob Freeze. And as we are doing that, I'm gonna hit screen share here. There. Okay. And I think we're I think we're good there. Does that look good? It for... looks great, Thomas. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to hand the walk <laughs> over to Bob Freeze. And while I'm doing that, I just want to introduce Bob. So Bob is a skilled and technical science teacher at Lincoln Northeast High School. And Bob's been teaching residential construction classes for 36 years. For the last 29 years, he has built a house for each year in partnership with local nonprofit agencies. He has been a volunteer for Habitat for Humanity for almost 30 years. And on the side, Bob finds time to be an avid runner. So we, I've worked with Bob um, with this Northeast High School house for the last six years. And so it's been really been a pleasure to see him use his time and talent um, with youth and also the involvement in our community is for much needed affordable housing. So Bob, please. Well, thank you. Uh, this is something that I've been doing for a long time, uh, out on construction sites with students for 37 years. The uh, program we're gonna to talk to you about today is our partnership with the Lincoln Housing Authority, a partnership between Lincoln Housing Authority and Lincoln Public Schools. And this first slide shows you the plan for the house that we built this past year. So that's where we always start is with a set of plans. Oh, now these are not advancing. Well, there we Here go. we go. Okay. So you can see that uh, we've been working together. These organizations have been working together uh, for a long time. And this coming year, 21-22, will be the 28th consecutive year of this program, and we'll be building at 5701 Ballard in Lincoln, Nebraska. And we've had a number of partners who've worked with us, 
And listed at the bottom of the screen are several of these groups who are partnering with the Lincoln Housing Authority and with the Lincoln Public Schools to make this build possible. Some of the uh, past stakeholders who contributed are shown on this slide. And I want to, in particular, I want to point out the Home Builders Association of Lincoln. Uh, they have partnered with us in many capacities. They provide opportunities for guest, spe guest speakers, field trips, scholarships for some, for some of our students when they graduate, and also jobs. Many of our students have gone on to work for members of the Home Builders Association of Lincoln. Okay, so the house that we built this past school year this shows you it's, a, it's an urban area. Uh, there are a lot of things going on in this part of Lincoln. And here you can see a street view of the lot. And you'll notice on the left side is a home that was built probably around 1900. And on the right side is a brick ranch that was probably built around 1960. And we're gonna build on the lot in between. And you can see in this photo the uh, foundation for the house and also the uh, slab foundation for uh, a detached garage. Now, this particular year, because of the pandemic, we weren't sure what was going to happen with school. So it was kind of a slow start. So what that enabled me to do was take the students out to the job site, see the see the lot, go out there during the excavation process, I actually crawl down into the, into the hole in the ground before anything was done so they could see what it's like, see the footings going in, uh, handle the, form, the pans, the aluminum pans that are used for the basement walls, see how those go together, the pieces that fit together, the rebar. So they got to see every step along the way. So it actually turned into a really good year, even though with the prospect of the pandemic, we didn't know what was going to happen. And here you can see after the foundation was in, the basement slab was poured, uh, we we're out on the job site framing walls for the basement. Uh, towards the end, after the house was enclosed, we built a detached garage. So this was much later in the process. Okay, and I would like to mention, too, the walls, the walls for the basement and the garage we build on site, but the other walls, we frame all those back in the school building. That makes it possible for us to work even when the weather conditions are bad. We have a controlled environment in the school. It's real nice. Air conditioning, we set up framing tables, we're framing at a comfortable height, but we start with that set of house plans and we cut plates for every wall we cut components for the whole house, and then we, we start building walls. And we just stack them at the back of the shop. When we're done, we have a stack about eight foot tall, uh, laid flat on the floor with walls up to 16 feet long. And it takes us uh, two or three hours one day to move all those walls out to the job site. So this, this, uh, this process has worked pretty well for us in the past. Here you can see students installing uh, soffit and fascia, vinyl siding, so a lot of hands-on work in this class. Due to the pandemic, we had to wear masks, so you can see here inside painting with masks on. So we, we made it work. <laughs> Every year we have an open house. The, the Lincoln Housing Authority has been kind enough to, to sponsor an open house to celebrate the completion of the home and the work that the students have done. And it's just, it's a great time to recognize the individual efforts of our students. And it, again, this year with the pandemic, we had to limit that. Actually, the last two years, we had to limit that to only one family at a time. They'd schedule an appointment and then they could bring their family through to see the finished product. But it's, it's really nice to see all the, you know, the students so proud of what they've done and the parents and families so proud 
of what their student has done. Okay, here you can see uh, on another house, uh, after the foundation's in, we go in and install drain tile, sump pit, all that before the basement floor is, paw is poured. And again, here we were putting walls in the basement on another house. Subfloor we're installing. I don't know what had happened this day, but we were hand nailing the subfloor, I think because either there was a problem with the air compressor or with electricity. And installing roof trusses, roof sheathing. So there's a lot of hands-on work that students are doing. Here you can see we're putting up the, uh, we're setting the walls that we've assembled back at school. So when they come out there, we, we have labeled all the walls, all the interior walls with the letter I and then a number. So I1, I2, et cetera. And then I'll write that on the print. So when we bring them to the site, we know where to set them. All the exterior walls we label with an X. So X1, X2, et cetera. Uh, in this, these couple photos, you see uh, this is an exterior insulation and finishing system that we've used on uh, several houses. This is two-inch rigid foam that covers the foundation all the way down to the footing. So these are four, two-inch thick, four-foot by eight-foot sheets, and they go all the way down to the footing. And what is above grade, then we apply a stucco-type finish with uh, fiberglass mesh embedded in it, and then there's a, a finish coat. After that all is set up, there's a finish coat that we spray over the top of it. So it's kind of a two-step process, but the students are able to do all this, and it's kind of an interesting system. And I know when we were doing one of these houses, they were building a Shields sporting goods store not far away, and they were using exactly the same process to build that. Okay, and here you can see us installing house wrap, installing uh, roofing underlayment, uh, more siding. So lots of hands-on work, interior, setting cabinets. So we're on it from the hole in the ground all the way to the end. And this shows you uh, just some examples of our open houses. Well, on a, in a normal year, we have an open house. We invite all the neighbors, the families, uh, some of the teachers will come, other people from the community will come. And it's just, it's a great opportunity to celebrate these students and to recognize them. For many of these students, this may be one of the only things that they've been recognized for in high school, but they are very proud <laughs> when it's all done and it looks good. It's ready for a family to move in. These, these guys are, are, they have a big smile on their face. It could also be because it's the end of the school year, but I like to think it's because they're proud. <laughs> All right, this goes back to our first build, and I just wanted to show you this. Um, this house we, we built starting in uh, 1993, that school year, 93-94, and we didn't quite get it done, so I had to run a summer school that class that year to finish it. But every year since then, we have managed to finish it. So let's knock on wood and make sure we can get that done. So we'll start in August, and we'll finish by uh, the time school ends in May. And this photo, the, if we look at these guys from 28 years ago, I guess, John, he went on from high school to attend Southeast Community College in building instruction. Uh, next to him, Sean, uh, he got a job in construction right after high school, and he has continued to work in construction, still does to this day, 28 years later, uh, still lives in Northeast Lincoln. I had his son a few years ago in class. Uh, Zach, the last time I saw him, he was a garbage man. Aaron went to work for a roofer right out of high school. And then these twins here, Matt and Mike, and I'm not sure which is which, but they each went to, into a trade directly out of high school. One of them went to work for uh, Wolf Electric as an electrician, and the other went to work for a plumber. And they have stayed in those fields. 
And so the, uh, the electrician, Mike, uh, he now works for somebody in Omaha, and he's doing more sophisticated electronics. He, uh, he came and saw me at one of our open houses, and his company has sent him to Germany and to Japan. So I think this has been a very good job for him. And then Matt has stayed in plumbing. He worked for a few different plumbers and then went into business for himself and owns Matt's Plumbing in Lincoln. Aaron went to Southeast Community College in building construction right out of high school, uh, finished there, and I'm not sure what he's doing. Um, Matt works construction in and around Lincoln. I've worked on jobs with Matt. Troy wor has worked in construction ever since high school, uh, still in the Northeast Lincoln area, had his son in class a few years ago. And then Jeff Zeiger works for Duncan Aviation. And here you'll see a teacher with dark hair before he's worked with all these teenagers and made his hair turn gray. Here's some of, uh, several of our houses that we've done over the years and some of our students. In 2001, uh, we received the, uh, an award in the HUD division, the Best in American Living Awards. This was presented at the, during the International uh, Homeowners Association's convention in Atlanta. And so I was able to go to that. They had a special awards banquet for Best of America Living Award, Best of America Living Awards at a, at a very nice museum one evening during that convention. And it, it really was something to be there with our, the houses that, a couple of the houses that we built and these big projects from all over the country also being uh, receiving awards. But these two homes went into an older neighborhood in Lincoln, which had gone into, the area had gone into disrepair. We built the first house here, and while we were building that, the house next door was, was fixed up. They, they made that real nice. And then um, we were getting ready to tear down the house next door. It was about to be torn down. One of my students uh, commented, he, he was in the class, and he said, well, he was a Native American student. He had lived on the second floor of that house with his, with his mother in an apartment. But they, that house was demoed, and then we built the second house there. And these houses fit into that neighborhood so well that years later, when I was talking to a student, and told, he, he told me that he lived right on this block or very close to that. And he, I said, well, we built two houses there. And he said, there aren't any new houses in that area. So those houses really fit in. Uh, here you can see more students and a family ready to move in to one of these homes. For me, there's really three components to this collaboration between the Housing Authority and Lincoln Public Schools. One is the project. We take the set of plans, we go through all the steps, we build it. Students get to are exposed to a lot of different trades and a lot of different materials, a lot of different skills. Uh, Another component would be the finished product, the home, which help, I think helps to improve the community. Usually when we build these, the neighborhood, uh, you know, some of the houses on that block, they'll, they'll fix up their home. So it really helps to improve the neighborhood. But for me, probably the most important thing would be the people. And uh, in this particular aspect, I'm talking about the students, but it's not only the students, it's all the people that we work with, the different subcontractors, different trades that are involved, and uh, other people in the community that help to make this happen. And finally, uh, I wanted to show you this slide, because this really, sh well, here you can see a teacher with gray hair. <laughs> uh, but this slide shows uh, a build from several years back and I wanted to point out this individual student right here. He told me that when uh, he was a year and a half old, he moved into the second house that we had built. 
and he continued to live in that house with his family. And now he was a senior in high school, and he was helping to build another house with the same class uh, just a few blocks away from his own home. And that house today has a family in it, and there's, there are children living there, and those students, some of those students attend Northeast High School just like he did. So when you, when you think about that, I, I feel like we've really gone full circle. This has been a, a great program. I uh, sincerely appreciate the efforts of the community members and the Lincoln Housing Authority to make this possible to expose our students to various trades in the construction industry and hopefully get them interested in construction. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. All right, I don't know. Yep, that's good. And I, I'm just going to add a footnote here. Um, the homeowners that purchased the homes, of most all of the families are families that work, we work with as far as the agency, the housing authority goes. So they many of them go through the family self-sufficiency program here and are ready to move from renters to home ownership. And um, one statistic I just really wanted to convey was I think as of house number 26, so that represents 26 years, all but two of the original owners of that house are still living there. So they, these are not houses that are bought and then just turn around to be sold. Um, these are families that are investing in the community and staying. So just I thought that was an important aspect. Thank you. Okay, our next presenter, and can everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up? Okay. Yep, you sound good. <laughs> All right. I am going to introduce you to Allison Feeney, and Allison is the Associate Dean of Instruction in our Skilled and Technical Sciences Department at Hastings Central Community College. She was recently hired and um, started working at the campus on June 1st. So she is uh, pretty fresh into that position. Allison comes to the Co Central Community College with 14 years of K through 12 educational experience, recently at Centura Public Schools for nine years. While she was at Centura, she taught and coached volleyball and track. She obtained her undergraduate degree in 1999 from Midland University in Public Relations and Advertising and Broadcasting her Master's of Arts in Education in May of 2012 from Hastings College, her 7 through 12 principalship through UNK in May of 2019, and will complete her additional principalship through UNK in 2022. As the Associate Dean of Skilled and Technical Sciences Division, Allison will be overseeing 15 different departments on the Hastings campus. Those departments range from diesel technology welding, advanced manufacturing, construction, automotive, HVAC, and truck driving, just to name a few. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Allison and take it away. Well, good morning. Thank you to everybody for having me in. And I'm going to start off with my little joke. I have been doing this almost as long as Thomas has 37 years, um, but it's actually 36 years and 11 months less than him. I did. I got started uh, on June 1st. So I have hit the ground running and where some of my other coworkers might be enjoying vacation and this might be a little bit slower time. It becomes five o'clock every single day before I even can blink an eye. So um, I'm just kind of soaking it all in and, and taking it in and very fortunate that I have a couple months this summer to learn uh, the college side of it. And then once everything starts up with students on August 16th, it's going to be just a whole new fresh uh, bit of busy. So uh, thank you for that introduction. Uh, I also will be sharing a slideshow here, so I will go ahead and get that pulled up. Alrighty, so I, again, yes, I did come to uh, Central Community College. Uh, this is my first uh, college 
uh, endeavor in educational leadership. So very excited. Like I did state, I've been here uh, just since June 1st. So I joke in a matter of days. So this is, I think, day number 21 on the job. So uh, getting right into it, uh, I'm going to kind of talk about uh, what I've learned so far uh, in my 21 days. And that is uh, how, how each portion of my departments fits into the whole entire field of technical sciences. Uh, construction is one of those uh, that we um, have always hung our hat on here at Central Community College, uh, just kind of like Bob, um, that token house build project is always a critical um, component to our construction house. So uh, here is a small little video uh, talking about our construction technology program. Enjoy. construction technology program at CCC can lead to a variety of different uh, careers. The students learn some basic hands-on skills that allows them to go to work right away if that's what they choose to do. If they choose to stay longer, they're going to get more into the management level so they can go right to work and potentially be in charge or potentially own their own business. Whatever the student's goal is, we try to help tailor our program to meet those needs. We have a two-year program. We start out with our framing certificate here on campus. We move into the interior finish work certificate, the second semester where we build the cabinetry and finish out the interior of the house. From start to finish, they have one year of some pretty basic skill set. So in their second year, they come back and they advance to building offsite for Habitat for Humanity where they're practicing their management skills. They're doing more uh, material estimating and learning their own leadership style in a safe environment. Their fourth semester, they're going to learn more of the design aspects. My grandfather was a carpenter all his life, and he came to school here for construction. And I just kind of thought I'd follow after him because I enjoyed doing it. And it's a great skill to have, great trade. It's a pretty laid back college, and it's pretty inexpensive compared to other places. Oh, the quality of our instructors is great. They're super friendly, and they know what they're talking about when they're teaching you stuff. So I, I try just to be like a sponge and absorb everything I can from them. Through this program, I've been able to go see uh, production facilities and get to network through this program, such as Liberty Hardwoods. It's a mill shop in Omaha. I would recommend CCC to someone because it's very personalized to the student. The teachers help you to succeed. So with that being said, um, when you come to Central Community College, you are able to uh, start off with your uh, applied science degree. Uh, completing that will be finished in the four semesters. It takes a total of 63 hours to complete that. Um, you can also seek out your two diplomas of your construction technology or your construction management. Uh, both of those are 31 hours. And as you can see, the construction management uh, we do partner with Hastings College to be able to complete that. Uh, so once they walk away with their four-year degree from Hastings College, uh, they would have their bachelor's then in construction management. Uh, we also do offer four certificates through Central Community College here on our Hastings campus uh, with your framing, your finish, uh, your job site, and your design and estimates. So um, with that all being said, um, walking away anywhere from uh, 63 hours over those four semesters to uh, possibly non-traditional students coming in just seeking certification also. Uh, like I spoke about, we do have partnerships with Hastings College. Uh, those students in conjunction uh, with our CCC students also are seeking that construction manager position. Um, some of the things that it helps you do, just prepare and negotiate cost estimates, budgets, and work timetables. Um, takes a little bit more in-depth look of uh, the process and the budgeting and working with clients, um, being that subcontractor position. Um, also helping you supervise the construction uh, positions, understanding how to deal with day-to-day -day delays, whether it be pandemics or uh, usage or having materials that are you know, being priced that you're not able to afford with your budget or uh, just a lack, or lack of materials. Uh, this slide indicates uh, 
our, our enrollment numbers. And like I spoke when I first started, uh, our, our construction technology program has always uh, flourished here at CCC. And as you can see, we average anywhere from about 48 to uh, 50 students on average coming through for our programs. And that includes both our first year and our second year students. Um, in 2021, uh, we did graduate, I think it was uh, 22 students. Um, and so we've got about 48 in the program. As you can see from 2020 to 2021, there was a little bit of decline with our participation, but not drastic, not drastic, which is, is good to see. Uh, this is how Central Community College will break down their awards and certificates. So as you can see, we are uh, constantly holding our own um, total awards uh, have grown over the last three years with our data that was present from 50 up to 85. Uh, and that's in the middle of, uh, of a pandemic too. So the best part about Central Community College and uh, having you know, the labs that we do, I mean, the students needing that hands-on experience, we took what we needed to, so students are still being educated and in the classroom. Um, and as you can see, um, our numbers were, were very well with our certifications. Uh, here's another breakdown of um, a little bit more in-depth data with the construction technology um, with your degree diploma and certificates with your male and female breakdown of your ratio. Um, again, sitting at about 58 in 1920 uh, for your total certifications that were received, uh, 15 diplomas and 12. So as you can see, we've got a nice mixture of students um, and, and a good average with our overall awards being offered. Um, like Bob stated, we also do have a project um, that we take on every year. Uh, it starts off with the foundation that is right outside of our lab area here on campus. So within walking distance, they are able to start that process, um, complete it both year one and year students will be able to uh, help out at, at, at varying levels depending on their skill set. Um, in 2019, we did sell our 23rd project home in CCC uh, Project House history. Uh, dating back to our first home in 1996, we have profited $2.4 million uh, back into that construction program. Every single time that house is sold, it is that new bank that will start us off in our new budget for our next year. So, um, the sale of the home in 2019 was the largest net profit in construction project home history. So that's awesome. Um, in 2019, that home sold for $165,000. Typically on average over the 23 years, um, the, the average cost of what that home is sold for is about 132,000. Um, in 2020, also, students worked with Habitat for Humanity and built two homes. Uh, one home was built on campus and the other one was built off-site. This year, actually, um, we decided to take on a larger endeavor. Uh, we decided to do a townhome project. Um, our local economic development in Hastings uh, worked hand in hand with us to be able to sell us four sites uh, in a new housing division that is going up on the north end of Hastings. And so instead of doing the single uh, dwelling home, we took on townhome projects. So with that being said, new challenges, new experiences, new endeavors, and taking it on the middle of pandemic, it, it was what it was. <laughs> so um, it's been a learning experience. And uh, just because of some delays and also materials and needing to be able to keep our social distancing. Uh, the townhome project will be uh, completed this school year in 21-22, uh, just because it was a, a larger project and it was just not able to be completed within that school year. So as you can see, um, here is stages of that townhome going in. Like Bob stated, we are start to finish our heavy equipment uh, program. We'll come out and dig the hole. Uh, construction takes over with that project. Um, construction uh, piggybacks with our HVAC and our electrical programs also to be able to come in and do the rough-ins and handle all of that. And then construction will come back in and finish up everything. Uh, 
a few of the things that we do hire out uh, sometimes will be the plumbing. Uh, this year, we're going to have to hire out the gutters just because the run of the seam is really long. And so uh, it's just one of those things we're going to have to hire out um, to be able to do that uh, justice. So here is kind of that middle phase of the home uh, that they were getting close to uh, this spring. And then here is how the home is sitting right now over the summer months, um, right at the tail end of the school year, they were able to finish that siding, uh, put the stonework on, uh, and the majority of the home is summarized. Uh, again, the soffit, the fascia, uh, gutters, that was at the tail end. So the fascia and the gutters still need to be completed and a little bit of construction on the back deck area. But this is how the project home is sitting right now. Um, and so our students coming in this next school year will step into that and be able to take over where, where this previous school year finished. And some other projects that you're going to see some of our construction students doing here at CCC. Um, our fundraisers are through Skills USA. Uh, they have created some reindeers and snowmen's to be able to sell around campus and to families. Uh, our TeamWorks team, like I stated, we also build a Habitat for Humanity. That is our second year students that will be able to go out and be able to work on that home. Our project house, like I just showed you. Um, we have built new garages and storage buildings around the Hastings campus to be able to help with our facilities department, um, other programs on campus that were needing additional storage. Um, in program history, we've also done a remodel of the Hastings Community Theater. There was a portion of that that we had um, the privilege to be able to help them out with. Um, we built a pavilion over in Highland Park in Hastings. Um, and then also we are our new AMDT building, our Hamilton building here on uh, on campus, uh, we did a portion of the addition onto there. So um, finally, I'm going to show you um, our graduate and success rate um, outlook. So our overall salary, um, an average salary, um, low end between 2015 and 2018 right now, as you can see coming out into the workforce in 2016, 2017, that high end salary, you know, is probably close to that 18, 18 and a half. Um, average salary with most of our students walking out of here is about $17 uh, dollars per hour. So the biggest thing that we're trying to do with educating our students is, you know, getting that uh, associate's degree, making yourself be more marketable when you walk out into, um, you know, the job force and, and understanding uh, how are you going to make yourself be marketable and how are you going to be able to utilize your degree to the max potential and to be able to get a job. So uh, that is what I have learned in my 21 days. So um, a couple additional, uh, not necessarily challenges, but things that we're taking on for our program to uh, run successfully. We have two full-time instructors, an adjunct, um, a lab assistant, and potentially a project manager. Uh, those five people could potentially be working our construction program. Um, Every single one of those people actually either retired or moved on or moved back into industry. So on day number two, we were hiring two new instructors, uh, seeing if we were needing a project manager to finish up that town home. Will we have the numbers to be able to justify a lab assistant and an adjunct? So um, over the next 30 days in the month of July, we'll be deciding, you know, our finalizing our staffing needs uh, and helping those uh, instructors get into their new roles before students get on campus so that we're ready to tackle that project home and, and pick up where we left off. So um, that is kind of an overview of the CCC uh, line of things. And I'll turn it back over to you, Thomas. Excellent job, Allison. I swear it's 21 years, not 21 days. <laughs> Thank Great you. job. Okay, next, our final panelist is Mark Bowder, Program Facilitator for Builders of the Future. And so Mark has been the Program Facilitator for Builders of the Future since 2016. Prior to this role, Mark worked for 27 years as the Industrial Technology Instructor for Omaha Public Schools and then retiring in 2015. Mark received uh, degrees in Industrial Arts and Physical Education from Wayne State in 1984. And Mark is also a licensed contractor, and he's dedicated to continuing the lineage of construction trade specialist 
throughout Nebraska. So Mark, if you are ready, we are ready for you. Okay. Share my screen here real quick. Hopefully we do not have any glitches. Um, so my organization that we work with is Builders of the Future. And, um, and this year we had 33. Uh, and a lot of people just see me, but there's about a hundred people behind the scenes that make this program work uh, with presentations to the students, to fundraising, to newsletters. Um, our website, is uh, something that I created since I've been uh, part of the program. Um, and I've kind of updated it a quite a bit to put a page for every high school. So if you go there, um, there's the website. It's tied to the Builder Foundation. That's our nonprofit. Um, and I'll get to that in just a second. So if you want to look at more videos and more, uh, this is the Builder uh, Foundation Board of Directors. There's about 14 people on the committee and they range from lawyers to architects to uh, uh, someone on the board. This is our committee members that we meet once a month. And again, a wide variety from uh, a lumberyard to the World Herald uh, to a site on uh, different things that we might wanna try with the students. Uh, our basic mission is building and develop tomorrow's construction leaders and trying to shorten the uh, skill labor gap, which uh, every once in a while I start to think that's not going to be possible because it's going to be it's such a big gap. Uh, this would not be uh, possible without Ted Grace. He started this with Steve Skidmore in 1993, and um, Ted has stayed with it for the entire time and basically uh, donates a lot of his time. His secretary works. Um, with us and does a lot of this background stuff for us. So if it wasn't for Ted Grace, this program would not be around. Uh, so I have to thank him a, a tremendous amount. Um, he's a very dedicated uh, person. And uh, uh, these are our material sponsors. We have five lumberyards we work with, and we have six other suppliers that we get materials for that are donated in one way. And how the work program works is the schools receive about $4,000 worth of building materials to build a shed. Our typical shed runs from uh, 10 foot by 12 foot. And it's usually sold for at a discount for $3,000. The schools usually net $2,700, which is 90% of the, uh, uh, the sale price. And 10% usually comes back to us for scholarships uh, for the trades for Metro. Uh, so our program is kind of, I just broke it down into about five parts. It's basically the school's building a project and it, it varies. Um, so Easton Blair and uh, Westside. Um, this year we added Pierce, Norfolk and Battle Creek because of NIFA wanted to see if we could duplicate what we do. So you, you'll see a, a for people, uh, schools around the metro area. Uh, and I told the committee that we couldn't probably add more than three schools a year um, because I a little bit more work and a little bit more time for me. So I said, so we've been kind of limiting it to three schools a year. And I told them when they got to 33 schools or 32 that that was probably about the max because I couldn't deliver windows, siding doors and all that and talk to the kids about scholarships if we got above 32. So just recently we've hired a second facilitator who's coming on in August. So we might be able to expand even farther than 36 schools. Um, so these are the current schools uh, we have now. Uh, we, have, we have two in Council Bluffs. We've also branched all the way out to Norfolk. Um, and then these are the schools. I went to Wayne State College and graduated a long time ago. So basically went back to Wayne State and said, who are your more productive industrial classes uh, teachers in the area that maybe do construction? So they gave me the name of why we went to them first. Um, and they all built a project this year with COVID being a part of the program. Usually it takes more than one year to get somebody uh, 
the program situated um, and understanding how it works and then to build a project. But all three were able to do it in one year, which is uh, unbelievable with COVID. Next year, we're trying to add Wakefield, Wisner Fielder, and West Point. And I'll get into some of the and how that works as we go. And hopefully my internet connection is good. Uh, we try to tie a builder to each school, but with some, some builders are now tied to two or three. And basically we just like them to come in and speak to the schools and to the students or bring them out to a job site. And uh, the best scenario that we've ever had, and that's why I have uh, Larry Neffler in the blue there, is he had four houses going up in a row and he had Burke High come out. And the one house was had the foundation and the, they were just framing the exterior. So the kids got to see a carpenter and talk to a carpenter. The next house was all framed in and the roof was on and they had electricians, plumbers and HVAC people starting to do work in there. So they got to talk to all three trade people in that house. The third house was basically drywalled. They were doing tile work. Uh, they were and doing cabinets. So they got to talk to a couple more tradespeople in that house. And the final house, they were getting ready to do finish trim and do the final hookup. So they finished and talked to. So in a matter of about three to four hours, they were able to talk to about 11 different tradespeople in different facets of the program. And that was probably the most ideal field trip we have ever because it was such a, a condensed, but easy to get back and forth between the different uh, buildings. Uh, so he's now retired and gone to Florida. So we'll miss him. He was a former high school teacher, so he really understood what we're trying to do. Um, but uh, these are not all the builders that we have. These are just ones that I have pictures of that I could put on the screen. Uh, and then you can see that we try to match him up to a school. Uh, and then um, again, they sometimes donate $1,500 to sponsor that school. If they're just a mentor, they're basically doing school or at the job site. Uh, these are just some of the projects we do about, you know, anything that people want us to do, we'll try to build it as long as it's, it's similar to a, so a school or district improvements like we've, uh, I think Hastings have done storage sheds on skids that are uh, moved to the property, storage sheds that are built uh, on site, playhouses of special designs, and we'll get into a couple of those, one or two car garages, pole barns, duck blinds, deer blinds, basement remodels, decks, chicken coops, uh, geese coops, uh, Christmas castles. So many different types of projects, and I'll just get through there. John Brockhouse out of DC West, um, he, we gave him an award back in 2017, 2018. He had done $250,000 worth of improvement projects for the school or the community with his classes. Um, and then you'll see here, he's not, um, he doesn't sit down and uh, twiddle his thumbs. He keeps really busy. Uh, classes, they poured four yards of concrete in about 20 minutes. And if you've ever poured concrete with young kids, that's, that's a pretty amazing feat. Uh, he had practiced all the stuff gonna do. And it, I, he hardly had to say a word and they just got this done. It was really amazing to watch. Uh, so uh, we also try to have the students DC West at one of his houses that he was building at the time. Uh, this is DC West house project. They started it in 2019 and because of COVID it got shut down and they finished it this year. And it was built behind the shop and moved to the site May 19th. Um, so this was, you know, he's done a lot of small projects, but now this is, you know, He's gone on to something larger. So this was all done by the students. Uh, they used the new modern technology to build this with a zip board. Um, they tried to do everything they could with uh, that was new and uh, uh, skills. Uh, these are a couple of kids on the uh, on the roof and putting the trusses up. These two kids, John told me that they love to be on the roof. If there was something to be up there with their harnesses and get up there and work. Uh, I told him, I said, you guys, if you ever wanted to be a carpenter, um, if you like being up in that kind of heights, you'd be a, make a great carpenter. 
because I think they're going to pick a different field. Too bad. Uh, this is Jason Avatni out of Gretna. He won our uh, Impact Award teacher. He does eight to 10 projects for the school or community each year. He sometimes runs a deck, a deck project along with a, a concrete project at the same time, and they alternate between sites. These are just some of the smaller projects that he's done at the building when the weather's not quite so good. It's just uh, uh, he does you know different playground, and these are some of the decks he's done. And they go out every day if the temperature is above 32. And he just tells them if you're going to be weather, so you need to adapt. Uh, I was there waiting for them on this site. Uh, and some of them went on one day, they were, I think it was, uh, snow was on the ground. I pulled up on their insulated coveralls and started carrying the equipment back to the uh, deck they were working on. And they didn't, they didn't stop. You know, they were in winter clothes, but they were ready to work. But this is a pole barn that uh, Jason Novotny's class did. It took him a whole year, $60,000 pole barn. At the, I think that was the total value. I think it, the, the materials was about $30,000. Uh, Burke High School did a display model for a, um, a computer company because they were doing, they did the uh, best way to put it is they programmed the inventory for a lumberyard. I mean, what pieces were. So they wanted trusses. They wanted eight different types of siding. They wanted six different types of roofing material. So, and but it had to sit inside their their office area. Look at it uh, from you know uh, downspouts to siding to countertops to uh, floor, and they have six or seven different types of flooring. Uh, mall that used to or uh, uh, yeah, a small mall that had this Christmas castle. So about 15, 20 years ago. Um, and the castle fell apart. So they asked if we could build it from a set of plans that was kind of drawn on a piece of paper. And we said, okay, we'll give it a shot. So uh, Vincent Hyde took on the project, they built it. Um, and then uh, this is the picture on the right is that where they came out to look at it. And on Christmas, the week before Christmas, I went out to look and there was a hundred kids standing in line to see Santa inside the building. And they had uh, reindeer in a, a little, uh, to him. This is Larry Kloss, who's currently um, finished his uh, career as a teacher, and he's now retiring. But this is some of the projects he's done at Bennington. Uh, they did a for the school district, and uh, that's about a $30,000 uh, uh, utility shed for the district. He also does basements with his students. And uh, so what they do is they, and they do a deck in the fall. Then they started a, a, a basement in, in, in late fall and went back to school, start working on some cabinets for the basement where they, the electricians come in and work and the plumbers, they come back and maybe help the plumbers and electricians. And then they, the, the winter break hits. So then they go and um, take the break. When they come back, they do the drywall. When the drywall is all up, they go back to school to finish the kitchen cabinets or the inner cabinets and trim work they need in the basement to be done. Uh, does all the work, finishes it. They come back in about February and they do all the finished trim and put in the cabinets. And then in the spring, he'll build a shed. Uh, uh, person did a great job with all the years that he's been at Bennington and really set a nice tone for the students. Here's just different pictures. Uh, this is a of our uh, material reps. So they came out and talked about how you put on Tyvek, how you wrap a window, how you install the window, how you uh, put the proper uh, materials on. So that's, I'm gonna go build. They do a, usually a habitat uh, project. So this is them working on habitat. And this is one of the sheds they built. They also do, these are all dropout kids from uh, all the school, schools in Omaha and the metro area. So this is their last chance to get a GED. So they, this is one of their classes where they're learning the GED uh, material. And one of the students out of this class a couple of years ago has now received his contractor's license. Uh, this is Miller North doing a ticket booth. So there's on, on the uh, school property projects. This is a real small one that they uh, did during the teacher's plan period. The student volunteered to come out and help him. This is Louisville, different, different uh, setup. They basically, instead of building one shed, they built two. 
This is Tom Peterson uh, before he retired. Uh, and this is some of the students working, but this up door rather than a, a hinge door, which is a different design. This is Wahoo's project. It was one of the most uh, fancy projects I've seen in my six because of these little fishtails. There's 2,000 of these fishtails that were all cut by the students and sanded and installed. Uh, and I think they glued each one and, then, and nailed it with a pin nailer, each one of them uh, separately. Uh, so that's, to me, that was a major, major undertaking by that teacher and the students. And uh, so, this is what it looked like when it's finished. You can see that it was the building was so tall that they had to take the top over here and build it separately. And then when they moved it out it, and, and to the side, they had to put the that the homeowner could go up with their kids and they could look out through the top and uh, turn around and look each way. Uh, Springfield, they're kind of a success story. Uh, the next year they did a man cave with two old corn cribs. Uh, the third year they did a, a, a little bit one bigger one car garage. The fourth year they did a core projects. Those those years they they made enough money to buy a, a, a traveling trailer, and now they have a saw stop with all their tools in it. So when they go to job sites now, they just pull up with their trailer. They drop the back. All the kids going to get their helmets, their tool belts. And they start working on a project. Uh, uh, and now they also do basements in the winter. Um, so this is, I'll make it a little quicker. These are just some of those demos uh, and pictures of them working on the projects. And this is the two-car garage. And this is the time lapse of about four hours. They had two carpenters that were from the mentors uh, company. They came out and helped them set these trusses. So they got to work with carpenters and Um, and at the end of the day, I think the battery runs out, so they don't get the full video of this. Uh, but one of the kids at, I think, one o'clock said, and the teacher says, it's time to go back because they had the roof all on. This all day. And so he would really kind of figured out what he wanted to do. He wanted to become a carpenter. Uh, this is Metro Community College. This is one of the unique projects that I've seen. Uh, this was a light castle. And this was an auction off project playhouse and they had electrical run to this. They did special landscaping for this. And there's a light up inside that the kids can get up and turn around and look and spotlight. Uh, so very unique project for the backyard of somebody. It cost, I think, $1,200 to move that to the backyard, by the way, because it was so uh, unusual in shape. This is a uh, Metro Community College of dual enrollment class where they have a test day and they basically are doing tieback and they get graded afterwards uh, by a Tyvek specialist that comes in and grades them on what they did wrong or did right. Capstone project, uh, they build a house uh, inside the building if you haven't been there each year. Uh, this is Thomas Jefferson. Um, this is one of their, a very nice uh, duck line. And then I think they did a chicken coop and they did the chicken coop, the chicken coop, Put nice windows in a chicken coop doesn't make sense to me, but it had very nice windows. And new this year, uh, and he was a first year teacher, had 18 kids in his class, and the principal wanted them to build a 16 foot by 52 foot storage unit or storage shed for football and track. So this is on the day I went up and helped them pour concrete. We poured 15 yards of concrete, and these are some of the kids working on uh, floating it. And if, uh, if you were there, you would have poor I've ever seen because these kids were just they had a lot of fun but it shouldn't have been that easy to, to float they should the it was a very wet pour in my mind so but that was really unique uh, and this teacher by the end of December he had all the walls up the trusses up and the sheathing on a half months or three and a half months with 18 kids in the class. I thought that was truly amazing that he got that much done because this class ended December. Uh, except for putting the roof on the sh shingles and putting the siding on. And that's next this next fall when they have the class again. Uh, this is Ralston. Um, and you'll see 
see there's about 24 kids in this class. This is uh, ready mix came out. They gave them, they gave them hats, they gave them t-shirts. Uh, but this is them wheelbarrow uphill with about two and a half yards of concrete. Uh, Ralston uh, goes through and a lot of other schools will actually cut their own rafters and set the rope themselves. Some schools will choose to build with trusses. Uh, these are just some of the Ralston kids doing some work. Uh, it's kind of unique because uh, it's not something they're normally used to. And it's they pick up the skill fairly quick and they seem to enjoy it when they get done. They offer chances to kids to explore the building trades, gain some knowledge of the building trades, to go right into the trades with the job app, which I'll get into in just a second. College with some scholarships that Metro works with us on. They give us 20 of them a year, approximately. And then become an industrial teacher. We've now set up scholarships for uh, Wayne State College for that. And then to help assist the uh, uh, teachers if they don't have enough uh, knowledge in the summer. So this is part two of the program. We started this this year uh, where the kids can just go look at jobs that we have maybe. And they can also see the uh, companies can see what workers might be available through our high schools. So this is basically how it works. Each student will log into our website. They go to the when they get done, they hit the send button or submit, and it sends me a full page list of information about them. And I can send that out to different employers. Um, on the other part, the company can go onto our website and they can list their contact person, uh, what the job title is, age requirements, work setting, essential duties, education requirements. They hit the submit button. Then I send that out to all the 36 or 33 schools that are interested and I send them a flyer and they can post it on a, a little bulletin board or just talk to the kids about it. And this is if things work, we would like to get it where the uh, website would actually list the jobs and then the student can come in and say, I want to, uh, I'm interested in the job at uh, uh, this one here is S002. It's a lumber yard. It's nine to, uh, best time to call is nine to 10. It's five days a week. It tells them where the location is. It's in La Vista and it's in the wall department. And it tells them. So they can sort by the wage. They can short, sort by where the uh, work's going to be done. Because if we have such a wide ge geographic area that a kid in Fremont does not, it'll be broken down that way. Uh, and then the other one where the companies would go in and look and they say, I have a kid that's maybe interested and this is a Burke student. He's interested in being a car. He wants to have about 15 bucks an hour. Uh, best time to call is after six. He's currently 17. His birthday is in March. So they can kind of figure out when he's turning 18 because we can't put the birthday on uh, because of the uh, privacy rules. And it just tells them if they have an OSHA card or whatever. Uh, this is part three of the program. This is where we start visiting with schools about trade schools. So Metro gives us 20 scholarships. And uh, in 2015, we had six when I first started or before I started. We got to about nine in 2016. We bumped up a little bit to 12, 13, and then 15, and then 20 allotted, and then COVID hit. So only six kids signed up to do the uh, scholarship. And then this year, because of COVID, I couldn't get into schools. Only eight applied for the scholarship. For your degree at Wayne State College, uh, we give four scholarships out currently to Wayne State, uh, uh, $2,500 each, and Wayne State with a teaching degree. And then, um, so currently, the, probably the biggest problem I've started to see is there's a shortage of teachers. We now currently have six teachers short in the metro area and i don't know if we're going to be able to fill those spots in the schools benson is short a teacher brian high school is short a teacher ralston short a teacher ralston put an ad out for an industrial uh, skills teacher and not one person applied and uh, and i i did some data research for the uh, committee and there's 42 teachers in industrial sciences that could retire at any time and that scares me because if we can't fill the spots for teachers they're going to shut the programs down and we're going to have less and less people in the trades scholarship at uh, wayne state uh, 
uh, Kristen is a sophomore, and then Zach Coffin, uh, Coffington is out of Papillion. And, and all we can to keep this thing going and get more people. Part five is what we do is the train the trainer program. We basically bring teachers that are interested in learning a little bit more. And we show them different skills and have our presenters come out like 13 or 14 uh, different presenters talk, come out from electricians, plumbers, HVAC, uh, and uh, just talk about their trades, how they got started, where they went to school, how much they make, and uh, if they're hiring people, what would they give for a certain wage? And then this year, because of COVID, because uh, I couldn't get into the teachers and talk to them much, we only had six, but to give the teachers that experience. Uh, train the trainer is basically two weeks in the summer at 40 hours each. They make about $30 an hour. Uh, and uh, to your uh, group, uh, we had a full class of 12. And this is where you can find us on the web. And estimated budget for us, for all. Uh, and it's basically done through grants and donations. Uh, So that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell, it's really fast. Hopefully I didn't take too long. Um, Great job, Mark, we greatly appreciate it. Good work. John, are yes. Susan, are you? Okay, I'll, I'll yeah. kind of turn it back over to you guys at NIFA. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we did have a couple questions come in. Let me scroll up and find the first one. Um, the first one, Allison, came when you were talking. It said, are any parts of the CCC program offered by remote instruction? Um, not as of right now. The only class that we do offer, and it's actually going to be new this year, is we're transferring over our blueprint design class from construction to web design. So our graphic design department is going to be doing that. Um, and that's going to be done remote because that's for our second year students typically. Um, so uh, that is going to be offered online just because of the sequencing of our coursework. It's not going to fit into their schedule. So um, right now, though, nothing is offered online uh, for our construction program besides that one. And that's just new as of this year. OK, thank you. Uh, this one, I think, is kind of for everyone. Uh, are these programs scalable? What are the obstacles? And I know Mark, you probably talked about some of these, but what are the obstacles for these programs to triple output of tradespeople in the state? I, I, one of the biggest obstacles is teachers, I think. And um, if we can't fill the spots for the teachers, we're going to be in major uh, difficulty trying to do things. Uh, it'll be a problem two or three years from now, uh, but it's a problem right now. I, I, it could be next year that, like Benson and Brian, they might not be able to run the courses they want because they won't be able to find them, uh, or they won't find a certified staff. They'll have to get somebody with a provisional staff, um, provisional certificate. Uh, I know, you know, Ralston, right? Not even one person applied for for the position at Ralston for a uh, skilled teacher uh, in technical sciences. That was stunning to me that they didn't even have one. So I think that's going to, uh, the other one is, uh, you know, some of the districts are really, uh, how would I put it, afraid or hesitant to let their students go. So the fact that Lincoln does it, it's really nice. Like we can sit there and say, hey, these other schools and districts are doing it. Can't we let your kids go out and do it? it it's kind of like lawsuits, whatever. And we have to get them over that and let them, what, some of our schools want to go to Habitat to build uh, projects in the future, right? Well, we have to get them over that hurdle of the liability problem. And with you know, all the schools that are out there doing it, like Lincoln, we can actually show the districts that hey, it's being done, why can't we do it? And that maybe we'll get them to say yes. Uh, Okay, thanks. There was a couple times where you cut out, but I think that uh, what you were alluding to is how important it is for the kids to be out in the communities working on the schools. Bob, do you want to talk about like, uh, did you have any hurdles with that or uh, in your experience with 
the on-site work? Any advice you might have? Oh, I, I've been doing it a long time. So when I started doing this, we were building sheds in the community and then room additions and garages. The house building project is by far the the best training opportunity available. And so I have really appreciated the partnership with the Lincoln Housing Authority because it does give our students the opportunity to go all the way from the footings to the the little trim pieces at the at the very end they get to go through the entire process so it's that partnership has i think made this possible and also i had some very supportive administrators to begin the process so they've allowed me to continue and bob is this true it's we talked about lincoln northeast high school but this class is available to all Lincoln Public Schools? Yeah, it is. Uh, and I have had, over the years, I've had students from uh, probably about five different schools in Lincoln participate in the class. Okay. Mark, I was going to ask you, do you still have your PowerPoint pulled up on your computer? Yes. I was going to say, maybe close that out. It might help your connectivity. Because I know you got great input, and I. John, can I add one other comment? Yes. Uh, regarding scalable, we were approached by Lincoln East about two years ago. A gentleman who serves in the very similar position that Bob Freeze does at Northeast was very interested in getting it started. A very, you know, house build program, and uh, so he approached the housing authority because he knew we were part of the uh, partnership with Lincoln Northeast. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have an interest to pursue that. So some of the challenges that we face with that is finding available lots if we were going to add another school because uh, many of the partners in housing like Habitat are looking for lots as well. So those are always a challenge for us. And then the other is a lot of the, at the very few first few slides that Bob had, the partnerships and so you saw a number of uh, financial institutions um, philanthropic organizations and suppliers they provide donations and resources to help us uh, subsidize the the cost of doing this very good thank you Thomas, um, let's see, there is a question here. It says when the schools do smaller projects like sheds, chicken coops, deck patio work for homes, what's the process? Um, who pays for the material? How are homes identified? How are schools contacted? Um, and then what's the liability for? Well, it says broken or poorly built projects, but it seems like um, what I saw in, in your experience, uh, there aren't any broken or poorly built projects. There can be problems, I'm sure. Uh, we haven't had any yet. Uh, but the, the way we do it is uh, sometimes the teachers have it set up where they just send it out a newsletter for the school districts and they say they're looking for projects and they get contacted that way. If a school is new to our program, I go out and put flyers in gas stations and restaurants in their town on, or near their uh, school. And then people contact me and then I go out and uh, look at the site and I make sure that if they want to shed, can it get to the backyard if they make it at the school and to be built at the site. And we, 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 I look, I try to figure that out before the schools even get contacted. Uh, the materials are all donated 100% of the by our, our material sponsors. Uh, when it's a deck, uh, it depends on what school you're in. That school will probably tell the homeowner, you go buy the materials. We'll above the materials. They just, they do all the material, all the projects for free. Uh, and the homeowner has to buy the material, bring it to the site, have it delivered, and then they do the project. Like uh, fork out whom they do uh, driveways and sidewalks. They just ask for a possible donation to their skills program after the end. Uh, so the homeowner pays for everything and they just do the work and then if there's a donation that's that's up to the homeowner 
but we haven't had any problem with uh, warranties. Uh, I know that the house that DC West built, when they that left the site at the uh, quick claim deed that they took over the response, homeowner took over responsibility of that project as soon as it left school property. Hmm. So the okay. as soon as it left school property. Uh, and that was one of the things that they uh, required the district did. Um, how about other comments about, you know, where you get the material or how, who pays for the material? From Bob or Allison? Of course, it's all just budgeted throughout the construction budget within the college, um, what I have for, for that. So um, the previous year, typically our students uh, will work together with our design students to be able to create a blueprint plan uh, to be able to come up with that house. And then you'll know, you know how much product you're going to need. And then that ordering process starts, I think, in the late spring uh, so that it's ready to go then for that fall home to start being built right when we come back on the campus at the start of a new school year. So okay. probably a little bit different, unique situation than a high school setting. So yeah. yeah. Um, well, one of the things that came across to me was just how proud everyone is of the students and um, the, the pictures you all shared were great. Uh, I was thinking, you know, I remember shop class and not being, you know, very uh, talented in that area. Um, I, I still have a few things I made back then. But what are your experiences with students that maybe kind of uh, pick it up really quickly and then others that kind of struggle? Do, do you see the other students kind of helping them out? Um, do you see a lot of teamwork? I don't know, I'm thinking of you, Bob. Uh, I do see a lot of teamwork, but I also see some kids who really shine where they have, you know, they've been in classes, academic classes, and they, you know, they struggle with that, but you get them out on a job site, and it might be a muddy, dirty job that we're doing, and they just jump to it. They love they love the hands-on component of the build. And, and you can tell that this is something that they're really good at. They're really talented at. And I have seen some of those students who really had no exposure to construction. They didn't get, have it at home. Uh, and through this class, they learned to uh, really appreciate this type of work and went on to careers in these fields. So it, we have so many different, you know, people have different things that they're good at and not everyone is going to be a, a doctor or a lawyer, but I'll tell you what, there's uh, there's some very talented tradespeople out there and it's, it's great to see them excel at what they do. We had another back on that then too also what Bob is stating is you know when you come into that college setting a lot of our students um, probably don't have as um, impressive lab areas and materials and those kind of things so this is their first opportunity like Bob stated to shine and to be able to utilize um, all those materials and you know who knows if they're being held back possibly in a shop class because maybe they just didn't have those you know materials that were newer or had the ability to get their hands on those things. So um, I think that's what's exciting of the stories that are shared already just this month of people that are just ex so excited to come to CCC because they know our lab and they know um, everything that we have to offer here is, is so impressive. So I think students do, they thrive because what we have to offer them is so impressive too, so. We did have another question come in that kind of follows along with uh, what you guys are discussing, which is what are the logistics of, uh, especially in high school, these kids doing the classes? Because obviously if it's a one period opportunity, an hour is just gonna get them started on the project and not really um, be able to do much. So how does that work in the school environment? I can speak to it from my experience uh, with the high school, we, we use double period classes to run our construction program because it is off site most of the time. And with the schools that I work with, we have you know, with so many different minute classes, 42 minute classes, some have double period like, like uh, Lincoln. Um, 
So the ones that have double or single period classes, 42 minutes or whatever, they basically in modular mode and build it at school, similar like Lincoln does with their walls. And then they will set a day where they have a work, what they call working field trip. And they will go out and get off for maybe four hours. And they will go work on that project for four hours, almost uh, like going to the, the zoo for a trip when you're young. Uh, and then they work for, for those four hours and they come back. And they might do that five times to finish a shed that they started at the school. Thank you. Um, okay, it looks like we had another question that came in. It says, uh, you've worked with a lot of nonprofits. Have you worked with for-profit builders in the industry? We are, our mentors and stuff are for-profit and they, they assist as mentors and sponsors, but um, we're basically a nonprofit that tries every, every money, any try to get the kids more into the trades and get them into the trade schools. We have always uh, partnered, tried to partner with nonprofits uh, for one thing was to avoid appearing to be in competition with the for-profit businesses. By assisting nonprofits, we could get the trade experience and, and help the nonprofit. So that, that was the philosophy we had at the very beginning with the house building. We do have support from uh, home builders who are for-profit developers, um, Denny Van Horn and Bo, yes. uh, True Built. So there are a lot of for-profit developers that are very interested and invested in making sure like this Northeast House program continues. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I, you know, the message is definitely loud and clear. One, the, the success that you've all had, success of not only um, constructing homes, but students going into the industry. And it sounds like that's the, the big push is uh, got to keep that going. And, and, uh, and hopefully there's people that are uh, going to school and want to teach, you know. Has anyone had any experience of, uh, I guess, Bob, have you had an experience of someone being a student and now being a teacher? Uh, no, more so they want to go to work in the yeah. trade. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, I've, I've known a lot of people who went to college to be teachers and decided no, they could make more money working in a trade. And so went that direction. Yeah. Well, there, there are, are discussions Two students happening in yeah. our program. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. But Two students that have gone through the Builders of the Future program have ended up coming back as teachers in one of our schools. Uh, Springfield had one that graduated. He's now at Plasma teaching uh, uh, the construction floors down there. And there's one at Bennington that is now back at Bennington. He's actually he's at his home school. Mr. Kloss retired. He's actually taken over for his former teacher. Uh, and the one in Plasma, actually, their district wants them to build a house. So he's He's uh, he's a young guy, and he'll probably we'll probably be able to get him to build a home similar to Lincoln. Um, but it, we don't get enough of those. Uh, it'd be nice if we had more because we could fill some of the gaps we have. But uh, most of them are going into the construction field because they know they can make almost double what a teacher makes. Well, where there are discussions happening now to try to figure out what we can do as a state to try to help um, change that. So um, I appreciate everybody today and all of your PowerPoints. I don't see any other questions that have come in. And Susan, it doesn't look like I've missed any in the Q&A box. You are so, correct. I don't see any additional questions for the panelists. OK, well, let me go ahead and uh, go with the outro here. So that completes all the questions from today's presentation. I would like to thank everyone for attending. And again, a special thank you to our presenters. Um, I want to also give another shout out to Wells Fargo for sponsoring today's webinar. So this webinar and all previous webinars are recorded and available on our website, nifa.org, under Community Development Trainings and Webinars. 
or you can go to our YouTube channel, which is NIFA Housing. And with that, I just want to wish everyone a great, uh, great day and a great holiday weekend coming up. And thank you all so much for taking the time out to do this. Have a great one.